These are some of Britain's failed asylum seekers. 18 years of being rejected and no one from the government has ever told you you have to leave the UK? No. But why are they still in the country? People would think if they've refused asylum, you would be forced to go back. No, no. No one forced me. We've met people who are able to make claim after claim. How many times have you applied for asylum? Five times. Five times? Yes. So how does the system allow it? It costs a lot of money to deport people, so they're left in a situation of limbo. We find out how often Home Office refusals are overturned by judges, giving asylum seekers hope. We are a future of Britannia. And go inside one of the legal firms that fights against the government. The asylum system is broken. That's the reality of it. These people are waiting to be let into this church in Hull. Many of them are in the country illegally. Failed asylum seekers aren't entitled to any help from the state. Once a week, a charity hands out basics here. How, how many people well, do today, you give to? Today, we've only had 52 because it's pouring with rain. But norm, uh, very often, it's 70 or 80 wow. a, a week, uh, just for the food, well, they, just for food parcels. People come and they can choose eight items. Mustafa's come to collect his and asked us not to film his face. You know, like, uh, there is rice here, tea, and uh, spaghetti. And that's all you have to live on? Yeah. How do you manage? I manage that. He came to the UK in 2016. I'm from Iraq. And a lorry over from France. Was... Of course, you're from Calais. But his asylum claim was rejected. It's interesting because people would think if they've refused asylum, you would be forced to go back. No, no. No one forced me. Just, uh, you know, ask me if you want. They sent me a letter. If you want to go back, we will help you. He took us over the road to show us the park where he's been living. Where do you sleep then? I tell you, any, any punch here, here, here. Sometimes I, I sit inside for three, four hours because there is heat here. Do you have a sleeping bag? No. What, just in your coat? I... He can get hot meals at the church. And as well as food and warmth, there's advice on offer here too. What's your current status? You're a, you're a asylum seeker? Yeah. Yes. Which country? Afghanistan. Afghanistan, yeah. We've got about 300 people, possibly 400 people now, that are refused asylum seekers that are just surviving, you know, under the, under the radar in this city. In Hull alone? In Hull alone. We've got a lot. Where are they? How are they living? You could be going to a nail bar, and the person that's actually doing your nails might actually be a refused asylum seeker that's been exploited. They're hidden all over the place, hidden in plain sight. But many of them have been refused. Should they not just be sent home? It costs a lot of money to, to deport people, so they're left in a situation of limbo. Quite often, after a few attempts, they do get status. It's why they survive how they can and don't give up. Sakile is one of the volunteers here to register people as they arrive. But as we got chatting, she told me she herself has been in the country illegally for 18 years. How did you end up in Hull? Uh, it's the Home Office from 2006 I've been, I have been in Hull. How many times have you applied for asylum? I think four, five times. Five times? Yes. When was your latest one rejected, the most recent? Um, 16th of uh, January. It means she survives on the same basics as everyone else here. She agreed to show us where she's been living. Is this the life that you, you dreamed of when you came all those years ago? No, no. I never dreamt of this life. But despite all the rejections, She's never been threatened with deportation. They just send letters and 
ask you if you want to go voluntarily, you need to tell them. Do you think that's surprising? Yes, it is surprising. And yet she's not alone. In the decade to 2020, almost two thirds of people refused asylum were not recorded as having left the UK. That's more than 55,000 people. With no legal right to work or benefits, Sakile's room in this hostel is paid for by charity. She's lived here since 2011. She came from Zimbabwe in 2006, leaving her two sons, then aged just 10 and 7, with her parents. Have you seen them since you left? No. I haven't seen anyone. Did you come here to try to create a better life and bring them over? Yes, that was my idea to, uh, to be safe and then apply for my kids in a lawful way to bring them and be with me. And now you've missed their childhoods? Yeah. What, what has that done to you? Mentally, really, it's disturbed me a lot. I'm not myself. So I've got uh, a very bad moments whereby I would just want to say, uh, why am I living? Why don't I just end my life? But there's that thing that everything's going to be okay one day. Do you regret coming to the UK? No, I don't regret it, uh, really. And I'm um, hoping one day I'll get everything sorted. It's a hope shared by others going through Britain's asylum system, and with good reason. Refusals are rarely final. When the Home Office rejects someone's asylum claim, it sends a letter detailing the reasons why. But then it goes on to explain in some detail how to appeal against that decision. And we can reveal that since 2021, just over half of appeals have been successful leading to Home Office refusals being overturned. Appeals are decided by judges in immigration tribunal courts around the country and lawyers for asylum seekers go up against the Home Office. The successful appeal case of this man, Abdul Azidi, a convicted sex offender from Afghanistan, caused public outrage. He went on to attack a woman and two children with a chemical in Clapham after being granted asylum by a judge after the minister who baptised him persuaded the court Izidi had converted to Christianity and would therefore be at risk of persecution if he went home. Back at the church in Hull, they also get asylum seekers asking to be baptised. We have some who actually, you know, would decide to, to have a faith and decide to become Christians and the church is open to receiving and welcoming those people. We do this about two or three times in a year when we get a set of people who are wanted to be converted. A group of people will a be group baptized? Of, yeah, a group of people will be baptized. Do you think that they genuinely want to become Christians or do you think that this... <laughs> help support their asylum application? It's, 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 it's one that I, I, I don't want to comment on, per se, but um, I believe everyone has got the reasons why they want to be converted. It could be genuine, it could be for other reasons, but we as a church, you know, open a hand of welcome. We do it and then we wait for the precaution of what happens after. It raises questions on the role churches play. But a change in religion is just one of many reasons an appeal can be successful. We've come to London to a meeting of Persian LGBT, an organisation that supports gay asylum seekers. Ricky, Ricky, another successes, OK? We are happy, we are glad. The man on the left has recently been granted asylum. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. We are a future of Britannia. Many here make the argument they'd face persecution in their home countries because of their sexuality. Ali's claim was recently refused, but he's still confident he'll be able to stay. So this was the rejection letter? Yeah, this is the rejection letter. And here is the right of appeal, you see. So with the appeal, obviously you're going in front of a judge instead yeah, of the Home yeah, Office. Absolutely. Do you feel that 
you've got a better chance of success? I'm so hopeful, so hopeful, yeah. Because my, I have some friends in community, they got their uh, visa status. So I'm after very, appeal? Uh, yeah, after appeal. I have one or two friends they got. So, so my you see life, it as a good chance? Yeah, it's a good chance. And Mansoor is hoping it'll be third time lucky for him. He's been rejected twice, but now has a new lawyer. I changed my first lawyer because he was not that much good. Because of him, maybe I'm suffering. Is it all about getting a good lawyer? Yeah. There's a whole legal industry based around fighting cases on behalf of asylum seekers. On average, over £34 million of legal aid per year has been spent on asylum cases since 2017. This is one of the leading firms in London that frequently takes on the Home Office and wins. A large part of any immigration practice, we see lots of very bad decisions made at first instance. And if firms have the capacity and the funding to take appeals on, they will do so. Sometimes even an appeal can be appealed, and these court documents reveal some of those cases. Westernisation is one reason successfully argued. When people have been here so long, they say they can't go back. And this is the extraordinary case of another convicted sex offender who continues to act inappropriately towards women, but was allowed to stay in Britain because committing sexual acts in public in Afghanistan would put him at high risk of physical violence from mob mentality. He was represented by this firm, but the top lawyer in the company disputes any suggestion that so-called lefty lawyers are to blame for the asylum crisis. The asylum system is broken. That's the reality of it. But when we have lawyers who go to tribunals and argue that convicted sex offenders, who the government has turned down, should be allowed to remain in Britain, that's part of the problem, isn't it? Lawyers only work within the system created, our own justice system. Now you've got a government who makes the laws, who runs the system, who makes the decisions, but somehow it's lawyers? I mean, come on. And consider this, even if the court hadn't ruled in this sex offender's favour, the UK isn't currently deporting people back to Afghanistan anyway since the Taliban took over. The truth is, the whole asylum process takes so long that by the time all appeals are exhausted, many people have found a reason to make a fresh application. And back here in Hull, that's what Mustafa's doing. As we were filming, he found out a new claim he submitted is now being processed. He's arguing his circumstances have changed because his health is deteriorating. My knee and my shoulder, you know, that stress. Eight years after arriving in Britain, he's back at the start of the process. I think so many people will wonder why you choose this life, sleeping on this bed, no, because... over going home. Because I told you, maybe it will, that for a while, maybe it will be changed, especially when I get the fresh claim that gives me a hope. So you just keep hoping? Of course, because without hope, we can't live. And Sakile also plans to have another go in a system that hasn't forced her to leave, but instead, keeps allowing her to try again to stay. So you prefer this life over returning home? Yes. Is it the hope that hope. one day you'll yes. get asylum that keeps you going? Yes, that's my hope. Her decision to stay is one many will find hard to understand, but she can because no one's forcing her to leave. And even if the UK government succeeds in sending people to Rwanda, under the current policy, no one we've met while making this film is at risk of being put on a plane because they've already been in the country too long. Well, in response to that report, a Home Office spokesperson said, we stand firm on our long-standing policy that those without a right to stay in the UK will be removed. Our Illegal Migration Act makes this possible, as people who enter the UK illegally will have their asylum claims and human rights claims declared inadmissible, and they will not be able to make a life here. 
Each asylum application is individually assessed, including decisions on the removal of individuals. Where people have previously been refused asylum in the UK, a fresh asylum claim can be made through legal representation. Well, if you or anyone you know has been affected by the issues raised in Becky's report, help is available. You can call the Samaritans on 116123 or email joe, that's j-o, at samaritans.org.